This is the complete rope walk. The left hand end is fixed and the right hand moves on a trolley along the wooden base. The trolley runs on four bearings and positioned by side pieces over the base. A cord is attached to the back of the trolley running over puller at the end of the base down to a 150 gram weight to tension the cord during twisting. Forming the rope is done in two stages. The left hand has three fixed hooks which spin to twist the threads. The right hand is a disc with three hooks which spins to form the ropes. The thread twisting engine has a 1 to 100 geared motor driving a gear train to rotate the hooks. A counter is used to record the number of turns when the threads are twisted to reduce their length by 12.5%. The bench supply unit is set at 12 volts. A voltage regulator is used to lower the motor to about 6 volts to get the hooks to rotate at 300 rpm, the counter maximum speed. The rope twisting motor has a 1 to 30 geared motor supplied at 12 volts. The two white gears rotate the disc at motor speed which is about 300 rpm. The white gear is not attached to the motor correctly as it wobbles so the whole motor gear is free to move and a spring keeps the two gears engaged. It was not planned but this ability to move the motor allows the gears to be disengaged allowing the disc to be turned by hand to make it easier to loop the threads. The gap between the hooks has to be one third wider than the length of the rope to allow twisting shrinkage. Mark the base with a zero for the left hand hooks. Mark the base with a gap distance. The right hand end is first brought in to the mark which is 695 millimeters from the other hook. Clamp it and string it up and then when you start to turn the threads release the clamp and then the trolley is pulled along to the mark which is 608 and that's when you stop underneath to stop the threads when I drop them from going all over the floor. Cut off. So we're ready. Zero counter, zero counter. Let's turn the power on. We're now going to twist the individual threads. The right hand end is fixed. Unclamp does help. There's no need for a clamp on the, the spinning disc. We're going up to 608 millimeters. That's it. We're now going to turn the spinning disc on. The twisting with rotation was 117, so we need to do 58. So we're going to go up to 58.
Okay, see that the thread, the rope has twitted in the centre. We're now going to check the lay angle of the rope. We'll put the device in. Move it across and we're going to check the angle. It's 30 degrees. So it's we'll do Ooh. It's about 37, so we do another 10. We lift it off and just evenly just check the thread. Still needs a bit more. some glue on the end, glue on the end, we let it dry it, If you want to check the diameter, get a pencil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten threads. So ten rotations. That is two it's twenty-one and a half millimeters, so it's two point one five direction of twist. All ropes should have right hand 40 degree lay. The angle checker can be fitted under the rope and the angle checked. Either continue rotating the rope to get the angle. Threads must have the opposite hand otherwise the ropes will clap into a heap. Hold your open right hand with your fingers pointing along the rope and the thumb open wide. Your thumb gives the direction of the strands and the angle is the rope lay. The angle is not a factor as the books say twist the thread until it kinks and then unwind a bit. This is not controllable so I carried out tests with varying reduction of lengths in percentages coming up with 12.5% as a compromise for different materials and lay angles. This machine was made so I can control the variables found when making ropes of small sizes. It works consistently. Check out my research for full test results and my previous failed designs on my website. The standard online colour ranges give you little choice, but the great thing about making your own rope is you get to choose the colour. My local sewing shop stocks a huge range of threads from Gutterman. The ropes are for my one-tenth scale French pilot cutter called the Jolly Breeze, which was built in 1913. Synthetic materials were not available at this time, so my only material choice is hemp. What colour is hemp? Using the online photographs is a problem, as the colour on the screen will be different from the real thing. My solution was to buy a metre of 6mm hemp rope from Arthur Beale. The closest match was a polyester thread 186. Stockholm tar was used on some fixed ropes and black with a hint of grey was chosen, as the tar is not a gloss black or brown. The Jolly Breeze has tan sails and the sail bolt ropes will need to match. I have yet to get a correct colour. For fun I made a piece of in red, white and blue. The bed will have to be remade so I can put it on the ground to make longer ropes. Three metre ropes will require a hook gap of four metres so the trolley will have to move one metre during twisting thread. So the tension weight will have to move one metre.